You're probably thinking, gorgeous C++? That's not even possible. And surprisingly, Google agrees with you. As every C++ programmer knows, the language has many powerful features, but this power brings with it complexity which, in turn, can make the code more bug-prone and harder to read and maintain. To address this, Google has a C++ style guide that not only addresses the style of their code, but their use of particular C++ features that are known in the industry for being problematic in terms of code readability. In this video, we will talk about Google C++ style guide as it applies to the style of their code, like tabs versus spaces, but also their opinion on the use of certain C++ features, one of the notable ones being inheritance. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Starting off with one that's particularly controversial, tabs versus spaces. Use only spaces and indent two spaces at a time. We use spaces for indentation. Do not use tabs in your code. While this rule may come off as draconian and extremely pedantic, remember that Google's style guide is built with thousands of engineers in mind. The reason that this matters for a code base that's reaching that many people is not everyone has the same configuration in their editors. Because of this, the tab width of a single tab character may be different from one engineer to another. In place of this, by using spaces with a set two space indentation requirement, it makes it so that the code is more likely to look the same between editor A and editor B. And no, you don't have to be that person that slams their spacebar key. Instead, you can configure your tab key in a lot of editors to emit multiple spaces in place of a tab character. Next, type deduction, use of the auto keyword. C++ has a keyword called auto that will auto populate at compile time the type of a variable. Use type deduction only if it makes the code clearer to readers who aren't familiar with the project or if it makes the code safer. Do not use it to merely avoid the inconvenience of writing an explicit type. Consider the example make unique foo, which is a function that returns a generic type. The implementation for make unique of the foo class obviously returns a type foo, and therefore the auto feature is allowed to be used in this instance. But instead, if I have a function called my widget factory that is not generic, the type that that variable returns is opaque. And if I use the auto keyword, the compiler will figure out what type is returned by looking into the code of my widget factory. But if someone who's not on my team needs to audit that code, they will have a very hard time understanding what type comes from that function. Therefore, in this case, auto is not allowed. Next, ownership and smart pointers. In code that uses dynamic memory, such as the new operator or the heap, bugs can easily arise when the dynamic memory is not properly accounted for. These bugs manifest in the form of memory leaks and use after freeze, only to name a few. To fix this, modern features of C++ and Rust implement a concept referred to as ownership, to define who is able to use and ultimately responsible for the use and freeing of the dynamically allocated memory. Similar to NASA's principles of data hiding, Google recommends limiting the use of dynamically allocated memory to the lowest point possible, using it only in the class that it was allocated by. If two classes need to use the data, use a smart pointer to explicitly pass ownership of the data from one class to another. For example, a foo factory will return a smart pointer to a dynamically allocated foo. If another class needs to use foo, you must consume it via the smart pointer. Next, exceptions. Google does not use exceptions, the try catch statement, at all. On their face, the benefits of using exceptions outweigh the costs, especially in new projects. However, for existing code, the introduction of exceptions has implications on all dependent code. If exceptions can be propagated beyond a new project, it also becomes problematic to integrate the new project into existing exception-free code. For example, consider three functions, f, g, and h. f calls function g, and g calls function h. If h throws an exception that f catches, g has to be careful in the middle to make sure that it handles the exception properly such that f can safely return. Also, more generally, functions may return in places that you don't expect when you use exceptions. Now, you can minimize this by implementing some rules on your team on how and where exceptions can be used, but at the cost of more and more knowledge that a developer needs to know about the code base. 
Finally, and arguably most importantly, inheritance. In an object-oriented language such as C++, a structure called a class exists. A class has variables and methods, for example, a string name and a uint age. A class can also have a parent class, where it derives some of its features. The variables and the methods are inherited from the parent class into the child class. For example, consider a parent class person, which is inherited by two child classes, mother and father. A problem, specifically referred to as the diamond problem, arises in C++ with multiple inheritance. Consider now a class named child that is derived from two classes, mother and father. The structure of its inheritance properties now creates a diamond. This is problematic from the perspective of code maintenance because it is ambiguous where child inherited its methods from. When child is created, the constructor for person will be called twice, once in mother, once in father. This creates ambiguity that is hard to comprehend. To prevent code designs like this, Google has very explicit rules as it applies to C++ inheritance. Limit the use of implementation inheritance and instead use only interface inheritance. Interface inheritance is the inheritance of properties from an explicitly abstract class, a class who does not have any defined variables or methods on its own. For example, consider the class animal. An animal in nature does not exist as only an animal. An animal has to be an actual animal, for example, a dog, a giraffe, a tiger. Therefore, the animal class can be thought of as an abstract class, having no properties of its own, only the scaffolding for a child class. In instances where you cannot use interface inheritance and have to use implementation inheritance, consider your design and instead try to use composition. Composition is the inclusion of a class as an object inside of another class. Consider the case of a car where the car class is not derived from the engine, it contains the engine. By composing a class of smaller subclasses, we reduce the ambiguity of which methods were chosen at compile time to execute certain functions. Well, that's it guys, thanks for watching. Now before you go and write your next piece of gorgeous C++, go and watch this video that I think you'll enjoy just as much.